All right, so we are about to start in with the second of our two semifinals. The winner is going to go on to play the team of Nas Pardee and Ben Stark. On the left, we have the number two team, Ian Flynn, Michael Mapson, Billy Mitchell, playing Four Color Sahili, Naya Company, and Grixis Delver. On your right, you have Levi Pop Pospical on Mardu Vehicles, Asa Snyder playing Grixis Control, and Paul Lynch on Miracles. Interestingly, this Grixis Delver from Billy Mitchell may be the only Grixis Delver deck we've seen all weekend. Mm -hmm. Certainly a year ago, Grixis Delver was the talk of legacy. Right. It seems like this weekend, Deathrite Shaman are more commonly contributing to casting Leovold Emissary of Trest. All right, handshakes, and we will begin. This is the Mapson versus Asa Snyder matchup. Now, remember, because their team is the higher seed, all three players, Flynn, Mapson, and Mitchell, will get to be on the play. And that certainly will help when Mapson's de deck, he is playing six one-mana creatures, one of them Noble Hierarch he has. Mm -hmm. Being on the play, you know, the Noble Hierarch to cast a three-drop, that's all well and good, but just having a turn two Voice of Resurgence on the play against a deck that is a blue control deck without Spell Snare is very significant. So what's interesting about Naya Company is it almost feels like this deck has been crowded out of the format, out of modern, by decks like Bant Eldrazi. If your plan is to, you know, play a Mana Accelerant on turn one and then a really, like, hefty creature on turn two or three, you know, that's the game plan for Naya Company, but it's also the game plan for Eldrazi. It's nice to see this more, this Naya colored deck come back again. Mm -hmm. And, uh, that little reliquary is a very powerful three drop in its own right. That can be larger than the Eldrazi even and go find things like Gavany Township. Uh, they are different decks, so you're absolutely right. Most people that want to play this kind of strategy do go for the Eldrazi. And so a pretty big swing here in the favor of Snyder. So the turn one Noble Hierarch was hit with a fatal push, and then Michael Mapson does not have a second land, keeping one land Noble Hierarch, it looks like, on the play. And now Snyder's going to try to pull away with a main face Thought Scour. Hmm. Leaves you to wonder you know, what, uh, what's left over in Mapson's hand. Well, it's possible he has, like, multiple voice of resurgences. You know, that would certainly necessitate, necessitate keeping the hand. It was also on a six-card hand to start the game. Okay. It's hard to go much below six when you're playing against a heavy control deck. Yeah, especially if you have a turn one Manax aren't. Uh, though, to be fair, the, one of the strengths of these Grixis control decks is with the printing of Fatal Push, they're just odds-on to have that one mana kill spell. Right. Only one Fatal Push in Asa's deck, actually, though he does have four <laughs> Lightning Bolts. Okay. So, so we had five choices, but hits nonetheless. He's going to Shock for a Blood Crypt. Something I find myself agreeing with Asa on. He has two Terminate, one Fatal Push. I, I do think that Terminate should be favored over Fatal Push in these Grixis decks. And how about this? Thanks to that Thought Scour, uh, Asa's going to have a turn two copy of Tassiger the Golden Fang, leaving Fatal Push in his yard. The nut draw. Well, we saw Rudy Brixa do it earlier against his burn opponent, and it looked fantastic. That was the game that Rudy won, and uh, it wasn't particularly difficult. Pass back to Maps, and he's got about one turn to hit that land drop, and he will. It's a windswept heath. Obviously, this is all happening a turn behind schedule, but we do see from Maps and Path to Exile taking care of the Tassiker. And the Path to Exile is all well and good. It solves the problem of Tassiker, but the Grixis Control deck is planning to use a lot of mana over the course of the game. So finding the extra land here is a big boon for the Control deck. Yeah, and Mapson was actually in a bit of a bind. So if he upkeeps the Path to Exile, there's a chance that Asa will mana leak it. However, by playing it on his main phase, which is what he chose to do, this has opened the window for Asa to play a four drop like Kali Toss a turn early. Mm -hmm. Also, just to turn sooner, will be able to leave up the Cryptic Command? Only one in the deck, of course. And it looks like it was actually just two lands for Snyder. So that was a, <laughs> getting the extra land off path was a big help. He's going to main phase Thought Scour for that next land, but misses. No choice to just pass back to Mapson. So here's a chance for some recovery from the Naya Company player. He has a Renegade Rally or picked up a second copy. Were he to find a fetch land, that could have been a big turn for him. Yeah, well, both players missing right now. Coligan's command the pickup for Snyder. First player to hit a land looks like they could be in good shape. It's going to be Mapson. 
It is a copy of Ghost Quarter, though. And Vendillion Click will be the end of turn play for Mesa Snyder. So if he cared to, Mapson could have Ghost Quartered himself and then gotten his Renegade Rallier to, to into play, getting back a fetch land or something like that. It, it's a strange play, though. It doesn't do much. We see Vendillion Click in response. Mapson will Lightning Bolt. Mm -hmm. At some point, there's a chance that you want to Ghost Quarter and take care of the Creeping Tar Pit. Asa Snyder trying to hit that land drop with Vendillion Click. He uh, put a Bedlam Reveler in his hand on the bottom of the deck. That card a long ways off. I wouldn't be surprised if Snyder made that play a lot when Bedlam Reveler was in his hand. <laughs> Not really a fan. If your hand is good, you really don't want to discard it. Looks like Snapcaster into Thought Scour main face for Asa Snyder. Still trying to get that mana base going. Mills two lands and draws. Okay, actually draws the land. Also notable, you know, Snyder making his fourth land drop. Still not does not have access to double red. Uh, his deck certainly skews more towards being blue and black. Uh, two creeping tar pits as part of the mana base as well. For Mapson, his play will be scavenging ooze. Played out just as a 2-2 and pass back to Snyder. And there's some real good discipline going on here with Asa Snyder with regards to the card Coligan's Command. Uh, he knows about these Will Leaf Leeches and Luxodon Smiters in Michael's main, main deck. Mm. Is pretty careful about casting the card. Yeah. Just making Mapson discard a card could functionally give Mapson a Dark Ritual. Kali Toss into play for Asa Snyder. First result in and is going to be standard Ian Flynn taking game one over Levi Pospicle. So it's four color Sahili over Mardu Vehicles. It's a need that certainly their team will be happy to have. Things are going getting, going from bad to worse here for Michael Mapson. Mm -hmm. And follow up to the Kletos with the Slaughter Pact. Getting rid of that scavenging news straight away, getting a zombie for his trouble. I'm gonna draw here of Tarmogoy for Mapson. Tarmogoy of pretty good size on this board, but it just, it's feeling like whatever Mapson plays, it's going to be met with another removal spell from Asa Snyder. Mm -hmm. Snyder will have to pay three for the Slaughter Pact on his turn, but his deck is not light on removal spells. No, we see Terminate and Lightning Bolt both in the hand. Uh, Lightning Bolt not able to hit, but Tarmogoyf, but Terminate sure can. Pays for Slaughter Pact. Good play. Yep. And it draws into a little bit of Babby. Draws into Thought Scour. Looks like he left up Blood Crypt so that he could have a best, an odds on chance of being able to cast Terminate. Mm -hmm. Of course, he's punished for that then when he draws Thought Scour for the turn. Yeah, he's ahead enough on board where it's not like he needs to Thought Scour into something right now. So it's slightly mana inefficient, but that's fine. Gonna swing with both two ones. Looks like he's willing to trade either of them plus Lightning Bolt for Mapson's Tarmogoy. Yeah, seems to make sense. These creatures are not terribly valuable. Also, once he has Snapcaster Mage in his graveyard, it makes his Kolagon's command more powerful. Yeah, if he kills Tarmogoy, he also gets another zombie for his trouble, so it's not really trading a creature. Right. Kind of a free roll here. Yeah, this looks, the more you look at it, the better it gets. Tarmogoy going to block a zombie. Mapson takes two. Gonna turn into Tarmo Zombie, though. And Tarmogoyf into exile, Kalitas reanimating it. Corsair of Krufix, the pickup for maps, and not even castable right now. This was a speculative draw that just continues to miss for him. Mm -hmm. Ghost Quarter is the sort of thing. You'd like to draw it naturally against a deck like Tron. This is not a matchup like that. And Frequently, you want to search for with Night of the Reliquary. He is main decking four copies of Ghost Quarter, so this is going to happen to him in a in some number of these games. Certainly, when he's keeping a one lander. Yeah, when you, when you main deck four copies of Ghost Quarter, you're just not counting them all as lands in your land count anymore. Right. Twenty-two total lands, including the four Ghost Quarter. With the Birds of Paradise and the Noble Hierarch, obviously, yeah, those are being considered spells. Uh, the Ghost Quarter makes sense. There's been a, a significant upkeep in Tron, uh, uptick in Tron as of late. Yeah, and we see these Eldrazi Tron decks as well. You can certainly take those apart with the Ghost Quarter. Right. They play two wastes, and after that, it actually is like you're finding wastelands. 
And he's going to make that Ghost Cover play. Recorders himself, casts Renegade Rally or Revolt turned on. He can get back a fetch land. This means he could revolt his next Renegade Rallier on the following turn. Kind of work his way up the land chain that way, but he's a long ways behind at this point. Yeah, ra Rallier finding a fetch land on turn three is pretty impressive. Mana Ramp spell. Now he's, he's far enough behind. This, this has not accomplished very much. And Snyder going to try to walk this one in. It is a Thought Scour. Continuing to load up his graveyard. Mills Manalik and Damnation. Big fan of promo cards is Asa Snyder. The textless Damnation. You see the FNM Manalik. The player rewards Lightning Bolt, too. Inquisition of Kozilek. Wants to see what he's working against. Another Rallier. Corsair of Krufix. Collected Company. Wiltleaf Liege. Showing being rewarded for never having cast that Coligan's Command. Mm hmm At this stage in the game, between the Courser and the Rallier, the difference is not massive. The value generated from Courser is more speculative. You know, where the Rallier, you can see it's going to get back something that generates mana. Right which uh, allows Mapson to get up to that collected company mana or cast that Wilt Leaf Liege. Snyder here is going to go for a two-turn kill. Going to terminate away the Rallier, make a zombie. S looks like swing for seven this turn, and next turn swing team plus lightning bolts should seal it up. Mm -hmm. And here's that hit, six and 17. Now life totals will pass. Mapsinga has one more turn here, but it'll be very tough for him to stay, uh, to be alive through this board. This whole game, Mapsinga's been waiting for the draw that, that allows him to start casting his spells and playing, and it just never showed up. Mm -hmm. Birds of Paradise on the last turn, kind of just how this game's been going. Yep. You see Mapsinga will scoop up the cards. Hopes you get something more playable in the second game as Asa Snyder takes game one with Grixis Control. Yeah, with those mana woes, you know, Maps is starting on a six-card hand with a one-lander stride to the bottom and just missed for too long is really the story of this game. You know, had the mana creature, died on turn one, and just didn't do anything for too long. All right, well, we're going to look over the sideboard. Maps in a lot. One of the things that his decklist is believing in is diversity of threats, and we see that again in his sideboard. Lone Missionary, Kasali Pride Mage, and Thalia, all creatures that are available to him with his collected companies after the sideboard. Uh, in addition to that, it looks like he has hate cards for different strategies. Not sure that any of them are the right ones for Grixis. Right. Uh, the two cards that he's potentially looking at are Blood Moon and Surgical Extraction. And both of them potentially have a notable impact, and both of them can sometimes feel like mulligans. Uh, the Grixis mana base is greedy enough. There's only two basic islands and a basic swamp in the deck, so if Asa just draws a non-basic, non-fetch land heavy hand, or just a land light hand where he has to fetch duels, the Blood Moon can punish him on the play. If you can guess it at turn two, it's likely to matter. So I, I like Blood Moon, at least on the play. You can use Surgical to functionally counter a Snapcaster Mage. It's fine, it's not exciting. I would not be bringing in all three. You might see one or two pop in for that reason. Thalia Guardian Afraid of him is fine. Uh, there's a lot of spells that Snyder's trying to yeah. cast that cost a decent chunk of mana. Yeah, I was actually interested about that. When your opponent's on a Thought Scour Serum Visions plan with Snapcaster Mage, it seems like Thalia would be a good card. But yet, you're saying as a Grixis player, you're not so scared of it. No, it, it usually just gets killed. It, it, it matters a lot more on the play. And notably, Snyder doesn't have anything that really max punishes you for casting Salia. There's no Electrolyze to really just destroy the X1 and gain some value, though Kolagon's command can embarrass Thalia. Though Mapson does have these discard creatures that make that less of an issue. Yeah, you can't, that two for one's harder to get off Kolagon's command, especially if you have to constantly worry about your opponent playing three four fours. Right. And for Mapson's deck, I wouldn't be surprised if he does things like shave on Ghost Quarter in matchups like this, just goes down on that and this has more spells in his deck. Over on Asa Snyder for Grixis Control, he's going to look for some anti-creature cards, especially ones that can help deal with the more 
pesky creatures in Mapson's deck. He's got cards like Fulminator Mage, is this Static Caster, Counter Squall, Disdainful Stroke, Surgical Extraction, Anger of the Gods, Crumble to Dust, and a second Damnation. What do we like? So the Sweepers are great. Anger of the Gods, Damnation, that's all well and good. Collect Brutality. Kills a lot of stuff and can look at the opponent's hand, see if Mapson has a collected company, pluck that one out. Is Ecstatic Caster is generally going to be pretty good. It's going to be more effective on the play than on the draw, but it still kills enough stuff, I think. And there's an argument for bringing him in Dispel as well. It's a one mana way to deal with collected company. That's often going to be Mapson's most powerful card, so the card is serviceable. All right, well, those players are still shuffling up for game two. Now, in just under one month, Star City is going to have our next Grand Prix that's taking place in Florida. It is in it is the end of the season of the Kaladesh Limited season. It's going to be Seal Deck and it's Grand Prix Orlando. On March 24th through the 26th, make plans to be part of Magic the Gathering history when StarCityGames.com proudly presents Grand Prix Orlando. Register by February 24th for the Kaladesh Ether Revolt Limited format main event to compete for thousands of dollars in prizes and receive an exclusive playmat featuring Scrapper Champion. Select the three-day Infinite Challenge package to compete in all challenge events for one low price while also walking away with the exclusive Scrapper Champion playmat. All Friday challenges are also Grand Prix Trials. Come out early and compete for buys in the main event and more chances to claim a Scrapper Champion playmat. Prefer 100 card formats? Register for the Ultimate Commander Package to play in four Commander On Demand events and take home a Commander vs. Playmat and Ultimate Guard Boulder deck case. And don't forget to come say hello to Grand Prix Orlando's many special guests, including cosplayer Vanessa Martin and an artist alley full of fan favorites, headlined by guest of honor Vulcan Baga. Be part of Magic the Gathering history. Register for Grand Prix Orlando today. Grand Prix Orlando coming up from Star City Games. So, Mapson and Snyder about to start game number two. Has some uh, results in the background. You see Ian Flynn chalked up a uh, one game win over Pospicle. And the legacy match between Paul Lynch and Billy Mitchell has its first result in that one. A counter talk block got assembled and eventually took over the game. Paul Lynch with miracles up one to zero. And that's uh, a lot how the Delver matchup against Miracles goes. Uh, they set up countertop. Sometimes you play for a little bit while longer. Something about the current build of Grixis Delver versus other builds of Delver historically, once you start playing Deathrite Shaman, you find yourself in more board positions where you want to control more than one creature. And that exposes you to Terminus more than other builds have historically been. Just hanging out with one Death Ride Shaman is not significant enough of a board presence. Well, this seems to be one of the reasons why we've seen a lot of these Delver players and just legacy players in general, whether it's Dylan Donegan or Sam Pardee, move toward a Soul Tie deck. Yes. Uh, for Pardee, it's a shift that is more powerful. You know, it, when you're playing just Soul Tie Delver, you still find yourself in a lot of spots where you want to control Shaman and Delver of Secrets. And I suppose in Pardee's deck as well, you have all these magic creatures, you also have Noble Hierarch. So you frequently would be casting multiple creatures onto the battlefield. Just kind of accept that Terminus is going to be a small L for you. Yeah, that is one of the things we saw that happen early on. Sam Pardee versus Chris Stagno, the first match of the day. Uh, frequently the Delver deck having to commit into an early Terminus. Sam sometimes able to recover from it. Their match looking very close. Now, fortunately for Sam, he has shown up with great teammates, and that match never concluded. Right. We're going to start second game, Mapson versus Snyder. So Snyder, with Grixis Control, takes game one. His team taking two of the three game ones, but not a sweep either way. Mm -hmm. Small lead going here. Mapson will be on the play. Hopefully with a seven-card hand, that's a little bit more functional this time. Snyder looked like he had one that was close, and he's going to be taking a mulligan here. Well, we're Star City Games, the game night promotion we have been doing for over a year now. Star City Games at game night, getting ex 
is there's game night anywhere around the country. You can get exclusive pins and tokens just for playing through regular weekly tournaments. Now, for February, we've been giving away the Corgi Firewalker. This is your protection from Red Dog. It's the 1-1 Soldier token. That's been available all month and still available for a couple more weeks before we move over to March's promo, which is the Pig Through Time. Uh, this 2-2 two -two boar creature, of course, not really legal in any of these formats anymore, so it's just too powerful. Yeah, Think Through Time was pretty oppressive. <laughs> it's interesting, right? Miracles played two, three or four to that card, and the deck is still one of the top decks in Legacy without the card, and just <laughs> got to be even better when it was around. Playing a non Dig Through Time blue deck against a Dig Through Time blue deck was among the most miserable I've ever been in my life. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, the Treasure Cruise blue decks were quite good. Yeah, they could, they mean, might even be better than the Dig Through Time blue I decks. I love Treasure Cruise. Uh, Legacy had that window where that one was banned, but Dig was legal. Yeah, the two Del Sols actually got banned at separate times. So there's this window where you could still Dig Through Time without Treasure Cruise. Yes. It turned out that they were both just too good. Yeah. Like, even the Delver decks, like your Blue Red Delver, might play Dig Through Time. Yes, uh, I was even playing a couple of copies. It was just more committed decks. Delver got pretty bad in that point in time. <laughs> and then we have our April promo. This one's coming up, and it's new. It is the Fleece Keeper, the 0-1 Sheep Token. Uh, straight out of Mirage, this will be given away during April. And if you get signed up right now as a store, you can sign up in time for the April promotion. The pacifist Fleece Keeper. And for Asa Snyder... It looks like this time the deck was maybe a little on him. He is now going to a five-card hand against Mapson. Remember last game was Mapson with the one lander on the play that never converted. Mm -hmm. And this is a creature matchup where mulligans are going to punish the Grixis control deck more than others. Uh, just given the amount of value creatures in the Naya Company deck, Collected Company also just being a very high-impact card, where something like Zoo, a five-card hand where you just fatal push, lightning bolt a couple things, can be more serviceable. All right, well, Mapson has kept, however. Looks like they have a judge question as they, before they can turn, con continue. But this time, his deck's functioning, well, hope to function better. He's going to start with Basic Forest into Birds of Paradise. Now, last game, Asa yeah. was... Last time Aza had was ready at a kill spell for this. We'll see if he can do it again. Right. Uh, this was the same, approximately the same way that game one started. I assume that things are going to progress slightly differently this time, though. You don't think we're keeping one land, Birds of Paradise, again? The mulligans on the other foot. Yeah, that's, I wear my mulligans on my feet. Yeah, you don't want to display them. Well, no, that's why we have. We only ever see us from the waist up. Exactly. Keep the mulligans below the desk. Looks like just a judge question here. Asa has drawn. We'll find out. He was able to answer the Birds of Paradise here. That's usually step one in the equation of beating these collected company decks. Really, just Birds of Paradise decks in general. Anytime that the green player gets on tap with that mana advantage, they just pull further and further ahead. All right, so we'll see. Can a the first test is on bolting the bird. Will Asa Snyder be able to do it or perhaps push the bird in this case? Fetching for Basic Swamp, I, I would be very surprised if this was anything other than Fatal Push. You don't have to push a bird very hard for it to go away. Oh, it could be, it looks like a discard spell. Or Mapson just says, hey, look at my hand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's Inquisition of Kozilek from Asa Snyder. Okay. And we'll see what Mapson has. Voice of Resurgence, Arid Mesa. Hey, there we have another land. Corsair of Crufix and Lightning Bolt. Collected company there too, but not allowed to take that one. All of the non-lightning bolt spells in this hand are very threatening. <laughs> I was going to say, as a control deck, <laughs> I don't want to play against any of these. This hand is Bummer City for Asa Snyder. <laughs> well, then we have to say, what's the biggest bummer? So between, so Collected Company is actually the biggest problem, and you can't hit that one. But Voice of Pers Resurgence and Courser of Crufix are both problematic. Goes for the Courser, and a big part of that, the Courser, again, generates indeterminate value. Sometimes it's less good than, the other, than others, whereas the Voice of Resurgence... Yeah. Always kind of hits the battlefield in the same way. The Corsair could really help maps and draws out. Yeah, I mean, it could, if, he, if Aether does not have a kill spell, it could draw any number of cards. Right. Voice of Resurgence and Fetchland for Mapson. 
His pickup is another card that's really tough for control, and I think I'm starting to see why Mapson's Naya Company did so well. He picked up a copy of Renegade Rallyer, and this is yet another way to just get some advantage. Mm -hmm. If Asa is able to, on the third turn, cast Anger of the Gods, that'll clean up what's happening so far. But Mapson, again, is building towards that collected company, and Snyder won't be able to do that very timely. Yeah, not off of Basic Swamp and Basic Island. Uh, but So you see with Mapson, right, he can use the fetch land to trigger Rallyer and just get the fetch land back again. So in these matchups, you really want to find your dual lands. The reason Snyder is going for basic lands is because he knows that Mapson has a bunch of blood boons in his sideboard. He does not want to just lose to that effect. Okay, so that would make, so if he doesn't have the anger in his hand, he's not going to speculatively fetch for it. Right. That much makes sense. You see, he fetches for the basic, then casts Serum Visions. Does have some threats. Picked up a copy of Kalitas on that draw. But there's a lot of good ones left in Mapson's hand. He's got Renegade Rallier, Collected Company, Lightning Bolt. Does not yet have the land to company into, not without the help of Rallier. Mm -hmm. But uh, if he decides to cast that one this turn, it will be resolving. Yeah, just one black mana open for Asa Snyder. And you see Mapson. If you're watch that, why, asking why some of the cards in his hand are flipped upside down, what he's doing here is he's actually tracking which cards Asa knows and which cards Asa does not know about. Mm -hmm. And it looks like as he missed the land and picked up Wiltleaf Liege that turn, he's going to go ahead and use Arid Mesa to find a land. Then because Revolt has been triggered, he gets to put the Arid Mesa back into play. Yeah, with two four drops in tow, using the Rallier as a ramp spell makes a lot of sense. It's kind of like Wood Elves, if Wood Elves was a 3-2 and could get you any land. Or a two or one mana creature in your graveyard. <laughs> or <laughs> this, is a, this is a lot better than Wood Elves. <laughs> I, 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 upgrade. I will agree. <laughs> Ace of Snyder. Makes an early Tassiger, or kind of early Tassiger. It's turn three, and he had to tap out for it. Up on the top match, things tying up between the two teams. Levi Pospical with Mardu Vehicles takes a win over four-color Sahili to force the deciding game three. Now Asa Snyder is entering a zone of danger as Mapson is untapping with access to four mana, Collected Company, which is a great spell, and Wiltley Fleas, which is a spell that allows his Renegade Rallier to attack into Tassiger. And no red mana yet in play for Asa. He is definitely concerned about Blood Moon in this matchup. Mm -hmm. And with Mapson demonstrating basic forest, basic planes. It, it makes enough sense to be afraid of that one. Yeah, when your opponent starts on basics too, you think, oh, you're setting up for Blood Moon. Yeah, you're up to something. You know, St Snyder saw his hand, but you can still derive from aggressively finding forest and planes that Blood Moon is somewhere in the deck. And Mapson is going to bully a bit here. Swings with Voice of Resurgence into Tassiger. Now, Asa knows that there's a Lightning Bolt in Mapson's hand. Yes. Interestingly, Mapson is not offering the Renegade Rallier as a trade, just the Voice of Resurgence. So he says, yeah, you can have like a, a one for one, but I'm not going to give you a two for one. Hmm. Mapson says, yes, I, I still have Collected Company and Lightning Bolt in my hand, plus these two other cards. Those are the two you know about, and that ace is not going to block. Another reason not to attack with the Rallier Mapson does not want to commit the Wiltley Fleas just yet for a couple reasons. It's something that he has in case a Colagon's command makes him discard a card for whatever reason, and also just to make the Rallier trade with the Tassiger. Third basic land searched up by Mapson. This one's a basic mountain. And now he will go for Collected Company. Looks like he's going to main phase it to avoid any possible counter spells. This does, however, play into Damnation, though Snyder does only have access to um, the two copies post sideboard. Kind of a miss here. We see two creatures, yes, but not all that fantastic. Noble Hierarch and Knight of the Reliquary, the only options for Mapson. And Knight's only a 3-3 here, but again, with the way that Snyder has assembled his mana base, no red sources just yet won't be able to cast Anger of the Gods on this turn. Lightning Bolts will hit Knight of the Reliquary. A good find for Asa, blanking that play while it's still available. Mm -hmm. Remember, he also can't do that on Mapson's turn because of Voice of Resurgence. Right. 
Uh, one's good against more than just counter spells. It also uh, affects combat tricks. Combat tricks, counter spells, kill spells. It's, it, it's a real jerk when you're trying to play control. Mm -hmm. Tassigar will even up the life totals for Asa Snyder. And we go back to maps, and it looks like he picks up another Renegade Rallyer. Yeah, no fetch land to trigger a Volt on that one at this point in time, but uh, likely to matter at some point down the line. And how about this? Wilt Leaf Liege is the play. It pumps the green creatures and pumps the white creatures both. Uh, Mapson is going to do one better. His two attackers are both green-white creatures, so they get pumped twice. This is a swing for nine. And this makes Anger of the Gods not good enough. No, it feels like we're at Damnation or Bust at this point. Mm -hmm. And how about Bust? Asa Snyder is going to scoop up the cards, and Michael Mapson also forces a Game 3. All right. Two of the matches in Game 3. And Ryan, that one, while Game 1 looked pretty solid for Asa Snyder, the fact that he's an all-kill spell deck looks a lot more shaky after you watch that game play out. It also, it's very much worth noting that just the existence of Blood Moon on Mapson's deck registration sheet has altered the way that Snyder has to play the game, which alters the spells that he has access to on a given turn. The mere existence of Blood Moon is, is a hindering Snyder's ability to play the game. Yeah. Now, on top of that, there are some things, though, that Snyder still has going for him. That he has two Damnations after sideboard still seems excellent. We look at that board there, and Damnation would have been phenomenal. Mm -hmm. That's also something to pay attention to, is that Snyder only has one Swamp in his deck, two Islands. So if a Blood Moon is on the battlefield, Damnation, uncastable. The Cryptic Command, uncastable. All right, so I'll go for a second game. Now, when there are cards like Voice of Resurgence or that sort uh, in Mapson's deck, does Asa Snyder then, you know, he, does he still keep in stuff like all this whole, all these Thought Scours, Mana Leaks, Cryptic Commands? Thought Scour, you know, he only has the one Tassiger and the Bedlam Reveler that really, truly care about the graveyard. Uh, Thought Scour does still enable your Colagon's Command Snapcaster Mage Engine. Uh, it's a card that uh, you trim on a decent number of time. It looks like he's left that stuff in. Uh, he doesn't have a ton of cards that he's bringing in this matchup, just a few um, that are particularly powerful. Okay. This is one of those matchups where basically all of his main deck plays, and he's just getting a little bit better post sideboard. Let's see. So they're going to start on the game three. We already see Pospicle and Ian Flynn on game three. Paul Lynch kind of anchoring down the team. He's a former open champion with Miracles. He's up a game. So currently still the Snyder of Pos Pospicle, Snyder, and Lynch. Has an, ed has an edge, but this one's close. It could go either way. Mm -hmm. Now over on YouTube, we have, of course, the recaps and videos of this entire team event leading up to the top four. That's available, will be available in midweek on our YouTube channel. Now there's other things on the StarCityGames.com YouTube channel. We have our split second, our versus series videos, commander videos, playtesting from some of the top pros over in Roanoke on all formats and Whoa, different yeah. decks. Uh, also our best of SED tour and a whole lot more. You can subscribe today at YouTube.com slash StarCityGames ton of great video content. Be sure to check the channel out. If you like what you see, go ahead and subscribe. All right. Snyder for the deciding game is kept on seven. Both players seem to start, though. All of our games are going to be at some sort of disadvantage. This time it is Mapson on a mulligan. Mm -hmm. And Snyder will be on the play here. Yeah, it'll be the first game Asa Snyder's actually been on the play. He's been on the draw the last two. Yes. The Noble Hierarchs the, uh, and the Birds of Paradise, they help kind of push that tempo back in your favor. There's also a decent number of good two drops in the deck. Still, though, it's, uh, it can be a real downside to a deck so heavy on mana creatures when they don't have the play. Yeah, they can use their Birds of Paradise to even things out, but where they really shine is when they get that extra mana on the first turn of the game. Right. No. That way you're not making up a disadvantage. You're pressing an advantage. When I'm playing a three before you're playing a two, there's a lot I can do in the game. Right. 
It's a bit different if you're turn one mana creature, turn two three drop uh, in a game where Snyder already has access to mana leak. Right. All right, Maps and trying on a six card hand here. Looks like there's some kind of judge call happening at the standard table. Um, but uh, Mapson, he's got a game to play, so he'll be picking up a six card here. Yeah, even if there's a judge call on your teammate's table, you have to maintain pace on your own game. Looks like Mapson keeping on six. Scry is to the bottom. So game three, this is the decider between Snyder and Mapson. It's going to start with Creeping Tar Pit from Asa Snyder. It's kind of a luxury he hasn't had the last two games, just to pull that land into play. Mm -hmm. And no mana creature for Mapson. And Snyder will take advantage of the situation, starting with Serum Visions. Yeah, it uh, could be a luxury. It could be a problem. We'll find out whether or not Mapson is able to cast a Blood Moon in this game. Right, this is one of the non-basics, something he actually never put into play last game. Mm -hmm. One thing he does have, he does have a copy of Inquisition of Kozilek, so even if Blood Moon's on his mind, he'll get a chance to take that out of Mapson's hand before it's cast. Mm -hmm. Other lands here, it looks like he has Steam Vents. He'll go ahead and shock for that, down to 18 after scrying to the bottom. No thought scout or no spell snares in Snyder's deck, so this is looking like either representing Lightning Bolt, casting Serum Visions, or leaving up Thought Scour. If you have Thought Scour and Lightning Bolt, frequently you'll just pass with the Steam Vents up. Yeah, it looks like he does have Lightning Bolt. I don't know about the Thought Scour as well, but certainly the removal spell. One thing that's actually hurting Snyder here is he actually has one black mana source, and it was his blue source. And now as things will cost just a little more, Mapson's turn to play one of those three th sideboard copies of Thalia, Guardian of Thraben. Means that that Lightning Bolt that Snyder was leaving up, not actually an answer to the two drop. Not on that turn anyway. All right, a two mana Inquisition of Kozilek from Asa Snyder gets a first look into the Naya player's hand. It is two copies of Path to Exile. A Renegade Rallier, a Tarmogoyf, and a Smiter. I'm pretty sure he's not going to take that one. That is the card that I would not take, yes. <laughs> um, Renegade Rallier seems like the biggest hit out of this hand. If Snyder's hand is weak to Tarmogoyf, you can see him go that way as well. Though, if his hand's weak to Tarmogoyf and Mapson draws fetch land, then Rallier just gets Goyf back. And well, how about this, though? There's no third land in play for Mapson. You could take Tarmogoyf, and if you do, and Mapson misses the land drop, then then there's nothing he can do. It's a high-risk play, but if it works, it could be crippling. That much is true. You see now debating, does he take the best value card, the Rallier, or does he try to hope his opponent misses a land drop and take Tarmogoyf? If he has a clean answer to Tarmogoyf, I would certainly go for the Rallier. You're right, though. If the Tarmogoyf serves to be a problem, then maybe it's time to gamble a little bit. And it looks like that's going to be the line he's going to go for. His removal spells look like they're Lightning Bolt and Cryptic Command. And with that Thalia in play, that's pretty rough. So can Mapson hit the land drop? It's going to be a big test this turn. And he wants to be a fetch land at that. If it's a fetch land, it's huge. Draws. Did he do it? Ghost Quartering himself would also be just fine in this window. Yeah, attacks with Thalia. Looks like, Ooh. yeah, it is the Ghost Quarter, so he'll Ghost Quarter his own forest into the graveyard. Love he, it. Absolutely, this is just fine. So makes two mana, we'll get a basic out of his deck. That's going to be three. And Asa took a gamble on hoping that Mapson would miss the third land. The gamble's not going to pay off. Mm -hmm. And now that Renegade Rallier that he didn't take looks really strong. So Mapson gets to play the 3-2 and bring back... Oh, he's going to bring back the Tarmogoyf. 
Yes, indeed. Oh, I was somewhat wondering if he was going to bring back the land, but no, this is just aggressive. He has two Path to Exiles and Athalia slowing down Snyder's removal spells. Uh, so he's just planning to turn the pressure up here. I mean, I get it. So we have seven power on the board. We have two un more or less unconditional removal spells. Mm -hmm. Opponents at 16, maybe just jam. In this game, you see Snyder is not paying mind to Blood Moon. If it happens, it's bad. Mapson needs to produce both the Red Source and the Blood Moon as well. Where Snyder still cannot use any cards like Coligan's Command either, with Luxon on Smiter in Mapson's hand. Mm -hmm. But now he's going to just have to answer these things. The Lightning Bolt in his hand plays pretty well, but that's about where it ends. So in graveyards, we have Sorcery Land. Yeah, that's it right now. Can't Lightning Bolt a Tarmogoyf under those conditions. It will go up to a 3-4 on the instant. Yeah, and that works, works in, the, in just a way that it would not... Yeah, it counts the Lightning Bolt before we determine whether it's dead. So it would be a 3-4, stay alive. Kill anything else that gives the Tarmogoyf a creature. Yeah, I suppose when you're shooting another creature but pumping Tarmogoyf, it's not, it's not great. Mm-mm. Especially not at the cost of two mana. Yeah, Snyder's in kind of a bad spot. And that, go back to the Inquisition of Kozilek. Really the, de the decision point here for Snyder. Anger of the gods would be mighty good. Be great. He'd need that untapped red source and anger, but that would be a huge find. His draw is a copy of Kalitas, Traitor of Gat. So the 3-4 lifelink, well... The, the issue here is he knows that Mapson's hand is double path to exile. The card is fine. Uh, Mapson has it covered, though. Yeah. You, if he's trying to, he just can't stabilize with blockers here. Th mm. None of them will work. Right. He has some cryptic command, but uh, he'll need to get up to another land before he can start casting that. Now it's the cryptic command, Kalitas, Snapcaster Mage. Uh, none of these are good in the face of the Thalia, though. So it looks like two mana is going to be spent to Lightning Bolt the Thalia. And this is interesting. This means if Snapcaster Mage wants to jump onto the battlefield to block Renegade Rallyer, Asa can make that play. Yes. He would not get to flash back anything like a Lightning Bolt. Uh, and that interaction double pumped the Tarmogoyf. Yes. Draw Renegade Rallyer for Mapson. He swings with both. This is a swing for seven. Snapcaster Mage from Snyder. Ambush will, Viper. Will Mapson let him block, though? Actually, a downgrade from Ambush Viper. That no one would depth. trade yeah, with Tarmogoyf. That would be great. Kind of Ambush Viper. <laughs> ambush Goblin Piker. Now, if Mapson had drawn a land for the Renegade Rallyer he drew, I, I, I think he'd let this happen, but it's a lot closer. Mem uh, so Mapson's considering a path to exile on the Snapcaster Mage as a blocker. That one doesn't seem too effective. Another option he has, should the Snapcaster jump in front of the Rallier, would even be to path to exile his own Rallier and start unlocking the rest of the spells in his hand. It looks like they're actually Knight of the Reliquary. Yeah, another uncastable. Yeah. I don't know, though. I, if he doesn't have the land in hand... He may have to pass this blocker and just move on from there. Certainly based on what we know Ace's hand is, that's the best play. I don't think his advantage is strong enough to make Path to Exile on a 2-1 a strong play. Looks like he will uh, let the trade happen. 4-5 knocks Asa down to 11, and no follow-up. He'll just say go. Snyder one kill spell from being in a pretty good spot here as Mapson's missed land drops. Mm -hmm. Picking up a fatal push or a terminate would be a really big game here. And he just says go, leaving up Crypto Command mana. So Mapson will swing with Tarmogoyf, put his opponent down to seven. He drew a land this turn. It's a basic planes. He can play it, but... But does he actually want to play anything into this cryptic command? Yeah, walking into a counter bounce would be a bad scene. And this is a great play from Mapson. He doesn't do anything. He just says, go. And Snyder is forced to counter bounce with the cryptic command. But that seems far worse right now. Draws terminate for the turn. Mapson has locks it on Smiter. 
correct? Yeah, he has a you smiter in You can't counter that one. He could have cast that into Cryptic Command. And we see Vendillion click during the draw step. We see Smiter, Knight of the Reliquary, Tarmogoyf, second Smiter, and two copies of Path to Exile. So that last turn, if he's worried about Cryptic Command, maybe he just makes Smiter into it. The idea must have been to make sure to leave up Path to Exile in case Kali Toss plus removal spell happens so he doesn't get zombied. Okay. Certainly that would be a disaster for him if it happened. Mm -hmm. Been dealing click during Michael's draw step. A lot of quality three drops here. And Snyder's shields are going to be somewhat down. It looks like he's trying to set up some sort of Kalitas terminate line. I suppose playing a second creature into a potential damnation is also not ideal. Yeah, and after looking at the hand, Aza chooses to not take a card. Yeah, I can beat those. And maps in it. Over his three drops, he decides to play Tarmogoyf, leaving up the, temp the path to exile from Temple Garden. It's actually quite common that Vendillion Click's text is look at your opponent's hand, 3-1 flyer. With Flash. So Vendillion Click versus Tarmogoyf. We know there's a term Terminate ready for that Tarmogoyf. The Snyder should be able to keep the board clean for the time being. You see that swing for three. Let's put Mapson down to 14. And he'll cast Seer Visions. Now, it's interesting. There's a Terminate in Ace's hand. And if he does just passes the turn, I'm curious to see whether or not Mapson is going to path the Vanillion click on the end step. Anyway, just to, he's got so many cards and so few lands, it seems like he may just want to use that spell. Mm-hmm. Looks like he does not. He has a bit of time before getting clocked by the Vendillion click is likely to happen. Swing from Tarmogoyf. This should get the Terminate out of Ace's hand. And that it does. Terminate will kill the, kill the Goyf. Revolt. I don't think there's a Ren 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 Renegade Rallyer in Maps. No, it looks like the other green-white three drops in hand. I mean, that would be a pretty... I suppose if Asa wants to kill that Tarmogoyf and he's worried about Rallier, he may have wanted to terminate that main phase. Mm -hmm. Not that it would matter. Michael's draw was Arid Mesa. And we see he'll fetch land and cast Knight of the Reliquary. And that knight looks like it's pretty big here. Yeah, this is the same game that Mapson ghost quartered himself. A couple fetch lands on top of that. Still leaving up that path to exile is Mapson. You see he's been doing that each turn. Knight of the Reliquary check here. We have four lands in Graveyard, so it is a 6-6. Six, six. Just one under the size it would need to be a one-shot. And for things that the Knight of the Reliquary can find, there's a Gavney Township, there's more Ghost Quarters, and a couple Horizon Canopies. A swing of Vendillion Click knocks Mapson down to 10. We'll see what the follow-up is here from Asa Snyder. Maybe that copy of Kalitas, but Mapson has been at the ready with Path to Exile, and that's still going to be the case. Here is the first 3-4 Vampire from Snyder. Mm -hmm. And with just a blue-red land being left up, Mapson knows that he can't get fatal pushed on this turn by pathing the Kalitas. There's a, there's a chance that Snyder has a sideboard dispel. Path end step for the Kalitas. And it's going to be Slaughter Pact for the Knight of the Reliquary. And this is a huge win from Snyder. Mm -hmm. Because not only does he get rid of the Knight of the Reliquary, he gets a zombie thanks to the Kalitas. Yeah, and Mapson's at 10. This is a two-turn clock. Stomping ground the draw for Mapson. Yeah, it did look really, like, that did not look like a, the Kalitas there didn't look like a play of confidence from Snyder. It looks like... And now Mapson's in a tough spot. Made even more tough because the standard match just finishes. Levi Pospical on Mardu Vehicles is the winner over Ian Flynn. So the team on the right, the number three seed, they now have one match in their pocket, which means if Asa Snyder can pull this game out, that's going to be the round. Mm -hmm. This is a must win for Mas uh, Mapson. Billy Mitchell on their legacy table is also in two consecutive must wins. He's been playing against Miracles for a while, though. Now for the team of Flynn, Mapson, and Mitchell, things have taken a turn for the worse. Mapson will make Luxet on Smiter for the turn. 
leaving up a second path, but he can just pass the turn back. And the Grixis player is starting to pull ahead with more mana sources. Snyder again pays for his Slaughter Pact. Draws Terminate. That's just about perfect. See, Terminate, a second Kalitas, a Liliana, the last hope available for Asa Snyder. He, Asa will start by just swinging with the Vendillion click. <laughs> and he still, still knows about that other path to exile in Mapson's hand. So terminating and going for the kill, not necessarily where he needs to be, he disguises the fact that he has to terminate in his hand. Also would be nice to save that tournament, terminate to cast Kali Toss and terminate on the same turn. So Michael takes the damage, goes to seven, and Asa continues to put pressure on with Liliana the Last Hope. She will plus one to make Luxodon Smiter a 2-3 for the next turn. That successfully gets him out of range of taking four and getting lightning bolted. Mm -hmm. And now Michael's got to decide if he's pathing that anything on the end step. His hand is another smiter and a path to exile. And it looks like, yes, the zombie's going to go away now. Is there any sort of haymaker, a Thundermaw Hellkite, or something that he's trying to draw to? Uh, just a lot of green creatures. I don't think there's no... no yeah, as for a Naya deck, this is actually very light on red cards. We're looking at just Lightning Bolt. Yeah, Lightning Bolt and Blood Moon out of the sideboard. So Ops decides ending up to not pass to exile. He swings with the Smiter. Zombie Token jumps in front. Yeah, I'm trying to decide how to get out of this one. Three cards remain. And he'll path away the Vendillion click, giving Asa Snyder a land. He'll cast another Luxodon Smiter. His last card in hand, that was his drop of the turn, a copy of Birds of Paradise. Pr rather late for that card, especially in the face of Liliana the Last Hope. Mm -hmm. And Snyder's leftovers, Kalitas, terminate. And that's going to be very strong against this board of four fours. Yes. Draw their land for Snyder. He'll start with minus two on the Liliana, getting any number of these creatures back. It's going to get back Snapcaster Mage. And that's just going to get even better. Starts with Snapcaster Mage. Snapcaster Mage will target, looks like Terminate. Make, let's check that again. That's how about Slaughter Pact? Targets Slaughter Pact. Asa Snyder casts Kalidus, then flashes back Slaughter Pact for zero, exiling Luxon Smiter and making another zombie. Now Zombie plus Snapcaster Mage can effectively trade with the Locked It on Smiter. Yeah, it'll just say go here. Last card in hand for Mapson is Birds of Paradise, but things have gotten very ugly for Michael Mapson. Mm -hmm. Snyder still comfortably on seven with a lifelinking creature about to enter the fray. Yeah, he's going to need to find a way to deal this damage immediately. A large lifelinker looms on the horizon. Asa has access to plenty more removal spells. And the draw from Mapson's Knight of the Reliquary. We know that Snyder already has Terminate in hand. That one's not going to do it. Michael trying to see a way out of this. Knight of the Reliquary still large, a 6-6. Six, six. Mm -hmm. Terminate does not check size. Yeah, no both Birds of Paradise. Michael empty-handed at seven, and now the question is, can Asa win this turn? He pays for his pact, 
He's really good at that. He's using the die on top of the deck, which makes it very hard to not to miss. <laughs> Liliana will take care of the Birds of Paradise, turning it into a zombie. If he can kill all three creatures, he can go for the win right now. It's past the point of mattering, though. Mapson casting Birds of Paradise into Liliana Kalitas that did afford Snyder a zombie. And you see Asa just passing the turn. He has a Terminate here, and next turn with the Creeping Tar Pit. That should be lethal. And Snyder's seen Deckless, who's not going to be any outrageously powerful land from that night swinging this game in any way. And maps and passes, and here is going to be the last plays here. Terminate on Knight of the Reliquary, exiles it, makes a zombie. And for Ian Flynn, Michael Mapson, and Billy Mitchell, this looks like the end of the road. Mapson's going to give a one last collected company a try, but there's six attackers he's going to have to find blockers for. He, at most, can find two creatures here, and there aren't. It's not going to be enough, as there's six to block out enough of these guys. He'll be taking seven. And two noble hierarchs, those definitely aren't going to do it. No, he says he can block three. Not even. Liliana will take care of a blocker. Right. And he's probably, Asa Snyder shows him the creeping tar pit, the Liliana, and it is some handshakes for these teams. The two versus three matchup goes for Levi Pospical, Asa Snyder, and Paul Lynch. Winning in standard and modern, they are on to the finals. And Sam Party, Matt Nass, and Ben Stark await. No big deal. It's actually going to be a rematch here. These teams having met early in the tournament.